Hello and welcome once again to EW10's Bookmark. I'm Doug Keck, your host. Our guest author, Al Smith, compiler and editor of The Cries of Jesus from the Cross, a Fulton Sheen anthology put out by our friends at Sophia Institute Press, available through the EW10 Religious Catalog, EW10RC.com. Al, first time on the show. Nice yeah. to meet you. Uh, people remember seeing you back on the, the live show with Father Mitch back in, back in March. Now, uh, when somebody's a compiler, we have authors and writers and sometimes editors. What's a compiler? Right. A compiler is a builder. Uh, you compile, uh, you always get these books that are a group of essays. And I thought uh, my work with Sheen, the Sheen Foundation in Peoria, uh, one of the mission statements of the, of the foundation is to reintroduce Sheen to a whole new generation. And so it was important for me to look at the works that hadn't been uh, re-released, um, works that maybe have been lost mm -hmm. somewhere in the shuffle, and to reintroduce them. And uh, I thought, Sheen has these beautiful books on the seven last words, in fact, had eight of them. So I thought that would be easy enough to compile them together into one collection mm -hmm. and uh, make it available. And uh, so I put seven of his books on the seven last words into uh, an anthology. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, I just thought, it's all the same theme. It's talking about our Lord's passion the words he spoke from the cross. Archbishop Sheen said, there's no preacher like the dying Christ, and there's no sermon like the seven last words. Right. And so these are uh, Sheen's homilies. And there's uh, people in the streets listening to him uh, at St. Agnes in New York City for many, many years, uh, dealing with the last uh, seven words of Christ, so. Yeah, and it's, it's funny, I, I think of Sheen in 1979, uh, his very last address, he said, this is the 58th consecutive year I've spoken on the seven last words, mm -hmm. our Lord's passion, his death, his resurrection, 58th consecutive years. And um, the people that lined yeah. up for his Good Friday addresses in New York, it's, uh, Absolutely. it's famous. So uh, I thought if he, he gave 58 straight years of talking about mm. Christ and him crucified, there's going to be some writing. There's right. going to be some stuff. Yeah, the loudspeakers into the street. And of course, it's people say words when it's actually basically thoughts or sentences that, yeah. that are included. Now, these particular ones that you put together, it's not like you took this, these seven books and just, here's book one, here's book two, here's book three. You laid it out differently, right? Right, yeah. I laid it out as a retreat. I thought, you know, we're all searching for a self-help book, a spiritual meditation book, and I thought, what, was, what would this be like if it was a retreat? And so to put seven talks on a certain theme, uh, to look at I thirst seven different ways, to look at the words, Father, forgive them, they don't know what they're doing, seven different ways. Mm -hmm. So that at the end of, say, one day of meditation or, say, over a week's time, you could have a perfect mm -hmm. retreat on the word I thirst, a perfect little mini retreat on Father, forgive. So I wanted to set it up with seven chapters mm -hmm. explaining and expanding on the thought of each word that our Lord spoke from the cross. So it's, it's that way. So you can read the book as thematic, if you want, if that's the right word to use. Uh, or you could just read the seven books themselves, mm -hmm. one after another. So for example, if you'd like Victory Over Vice, you would just read the fourth meditation from each chapter, and you have read the complete book. Now, Victory Over Vice is an important book to you. Why? Yeah. Well, it's the first book that I read back in 2009. Uh, we were dropping our daughter off at, to a, a college up in Ontario, Our Lady Seat of Wisdom. Mm -hmm. uh, it's actually in the Newman Guide as one of the approved that's colleges. That's you dedicated the book to. That's yeah. right, to Our Lady Seat of Wisdom, because that's where I found Sheen's writings. Mm -hmm. And my wife was there, and she was uh, going through a, a box of books that said free, and the library was taking the old books out and putting the new books in. And when she saw the words free book, she thought, right away, I need these. And she picked up the book, A Piece of Soul, Sheen's Reflections, uh, his Catholic Hour reflection, Reflections that were turned into a book. That's the radio show he used yes, to Catholic Hour. Yes, that's right, the Catholic Hour. And uh, we opened the book together, and the first lines of that book said this, unless souls are saved, nothing is saved. Unless souls are saved, nothing is saved. And I knew right away that Sheen had my attention. And so we, we came home, and I said to my wife, can I read that book? And she said, no, no, get your own Sheen book. <laughs> And I looked through his list of titles, and I saw that book, Victory Over Vice. And I thought, hmm, this is catching my attention. I'm not, you know, I have some sin, but not that many. Mm -hmm. And that book went through the seven deadly sins, and Sheen provided an antidote for each one of the seven deadly sins with 
each one of the seven last words. Mm -hmm. uh, the sin of anger, he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. You know, many of our viewers listen, you know, they, they wrestle with anger. Sure. Yet he yeah. somehow explained how our Lord preached forgiveness, and then of course preached forgiveness from the cross. And so anger was addressed with those words, Father, forgive them, they don't know what they're doing. The sin of envy, he talks about uh, the role of the two thieves, uh, mm -hmm. the good thief and the bad thief. Uh, the bad thief envied our Lord, the power he had, and he said, right. if you be the Christ, let's get down. And uh, yet the good thief had no envy. And uh, it continues, uh, the sin of lust, with woman behold your son, son behold your mother. If we brought the blessed mother into our lives, it would really help us with holy purity. Mm -hmm. The sin of pride, when he says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Uh, the sin of laziness, when he says, it is finished. Uh, I came to do the Father's will and look by example. Right. Uh, the words, I thirst for gluttony. Right. And the words, uh, of course, for greed, with Father into your hands, I commend me your spirit. Right. So those seven, um, that little book, mm -hmm. Sheen had, um, I guess, an ability to get into my heart and make me feel guilty for my sins. Mm -hmm. I never really felt that sorry for my sins. Mm -hmm. I went to confession. Or did you also realize there may have been things that you were accepting about yourself that really were sins that you maybe needed to focus more on, right? Correct, right. correct, yeah. So he got my attention. Mm -hmm. And uh, my father is a convert because of Sheen's books. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize this until later on. Uh, my father's been deceased for 30 years, and uh, but my mother did tell me that uh, it was Sheen's writings that uh, really helped him uh, to understand the Catholic faith. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm sure he read Victory Over Vice uh, many now, years ago. You say the anthology has been arranged into seven chapters. Uh, basically, number one is the words spoken by Christ from the cross. Two, the Beatitudes, sorrow and suffering is number three. Four, the seven deadly sins. Five, seven virtues. Six, groups who reject the church and church teachings and seven, the unity of Jesus and Mary. Uh, and you point out that he might also find that Archbishop Sheen has repeated certain lines throughout the reflections. That's one of the things you would wonder about because you're thinking, well, if he's done this so many times, how, many of this, how much of this is the same and is it meant to be the same or repeated? Yeah, uh, every good teacher will repeat the important uh, themes. And uh, there is some repetitiveness in an anthology, mm -hmm. uh, but not so much so that uh, you become frustrated. Uh, through each chapter, you, he may repeat a theme just twice, mm -hmm. but again, you're glad he repeated it. By the time you're in that, you end that chapter, uh, you're glad. You mm -hmm. know, it's it's not annoying by any means. Uh, Sheen was taught by Cardinal Mercier when he was at Louvain University, mm -hmm. and he said, "Always tear up your notes. Mm -hmm. Don't repeat the same lesson every." every year and you can see by this anthology that Sheen mm -hmm. uh, always changed up his notes right. you know always still spoke about the seven last words but with a different theme mm -hmm. uh, very interesting uh, chapter three unjust suffering the world is full of those who suffer unjustly and who through no fault of their own and he goes on to say if there were ever anyone who had a right to protest against injustices it is he who is divine and he go on to father forgive me know not what they do and it's interesting too because in many ways today so many of us feel uh, ill-treated. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think this is what Sheen did when he was giving these Catholic Hour Reflections which turned into the book. Um, he was reaching out to people to say, you know what, our Lord suffered unjustly and I know you might also suffer unjustly. And he was really pulling us into our Lord's passion and just again the pain he experienced in his life. Mm -hmm. uh, to, uh, unjust suffering is part of the plan. Mm -hmm. Being falsely accused, our Lord was falsely accused. And so he was giving people courage and hope by just t talking about that topic of unjust suffering. And then there's those souls, the poor clairs, the, the people that just want to do penance mm -hmm. and uh, just offer it up. And he gives that example also in that chapter of the many religious orders that you know, we just want to make sacrifice uh, for those who are suffering unjustly. In the chapter on fortitude, uh, the example of a bad Catholic is most often appealed to as a justification for evil. I thought this was very appropriate mm -hmm. for today. Why is it that the world is more scandalized at a bad Catholic than a bad anything else if it be not because his fall is rightly measured by the heights from which he has fallen? I know. I mean, we see that, I mean, there's those famous famous. Catholic families that we spend a lot of time and attention uh, speaking about them. Uh, but you've been given this great treasure, mm -hmm. this great treasure. So 
when you lose the treasure, it's just a travesty. And uh, Sheen brought that to our attention. Right. Yeah. And the idea that in some ways, whether the world admits it or not, that does expect more out of people they believe are certainly Catholic or religious or living out their faith. Mm -hmm. And so when they fall, it, it, it's that yeah. much more noticeable. Right. He also said most people today, and I think he, it's today as well, uh, Sheen was an incredible mm -hmm. prophet, uh, most people today want a religion that suits the way they live rather than the one that makes demands upon them. The result is that in order to make religion popular, too many prophets have watered down religion till it is hardly distinct from sentimental secularism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we want to pick and choose religion. Uh, that's just, um, it's the spirit of relativism uh, that is pervading the world and uh, Sheen was speaking about that in uh, 1938. Mm -hmm. It's unbelievable. Uh, but he did mention again fortitude. Uh, it's so important right. that we practice the virtue of fortitude. And uh, I think when he talked about the seven virtues, uh, it's we need it today mm -hmm. and I think that's what's so refreshing people are making comments to say yeah I never really thought about fortitude justice mm -hmm. temperance these are words we don't hear anymore right exactly that level of yeah. stick to itiveness yes uh, that putting up when things get tough and not right away giving up and walking away right. and putting raising yes. our hands up in a word to humanists again because of so much of what's going on today uh, they want an education of self-expression a God without justice a morality without religion, a Christ without a cross, a Christianity without sacrifice, a kingdom of God without redemption. Yeah, it's true. I, what he was saying, they want a cross without a crucifix. Uh, they want brotherhood. And it's funny, Sheen writes, he says, you know, they want a brotherhood, but without a Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. And uh, they don't want to point to Christ or point to God, uh, but they really preach brotherhood a great deal. But again, they want a cross but not a crucifix. Well, we can't have any brothers if you don't have a father. That's right. Right, right. right. So, religion, the humanists insist, must be love. And who speaks more of brotherhood than humanists? But they want to love without a cross, as you just said. Mm -hmm. You said a religion without a cross, this is the essence of humanism. And then he goes on to say, humanists, you have humanized God unless you have dehumanized man. Mm -hmm. We've seen a lot of that. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. And uh, again, throughout the book, and I think I, I mentioned it in the introduction, I said there's going to be times when you read passages from Sheen and you're just going to have to stop. You're just going to have to stop because uh, there's so much truth in it. Uh, again, people say that all the time, I have to keep putting the book down, but they get back right. to it. And uh, again, lines like that. Kind of reflect on what he has to say. Yeah, and, and how relevant it is today. Even though mm -hmm. these reflections are from the 30s and the 40s, it's like he's here in the year 2019. Right. Really. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and some of it's prophetic, and other part of it I think is revealing over the fact that maybe some of the halcyon days of the past weren't actually all so good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That these problems have been with us forever. Right. Yeah, sin is the same in the 1940s as it is in the today, right. in this year. So. Right, exactly. Yeah. The human never longs, long remains the humanist for either beast or angel he becomes. Mm -hmm but not just man. If you came from the beast, you cannot leave the beast behind. But if you came from God, then you can leave humanity behind and be a child of God. Yes, yeah. And then that's what Sheen really speaks a great deal to about is becoming children of God. Of course, when he uh, spends time with the passage, woman, behold your son, behold your mother, he, he talks about the church's teaching of that, it's that moment that we became children of Mary. Mm -hmm. And he really draws us in to a relationship with Mary and uh, she is at the foot of the cross, but uh, a great gift to us. And uh, again, uh, the strength that we can draw from the Blessed Mother, and of course his writings reflected that. Right, blessed are the clean of heart, something we don't really hear about very much. God in his wisdom has instituted two escapes from the selfishness of the flesh, the sacrament of matrimony and the vow of chastity. Each not only breaks the cycle of selfishness, but makes it possible a greater and wider field of service or to turn the truth around, the greatest, the purity of heart, the less, the selfishness. And he talks about the fact that marriage releases the flesh from its individual selfishness for the service of the family. The vow of chastity releases the flesh not only from the narrow and circumcised uh, family where there can be still be selfishness, but also for the service of the family that embraces all humanity. Yes, and Sheen talks about a higher love. I think a lot of times that's one thing we don't think about is this We've lost this love for the Blessed Mother and the example she gives to us. And um, again, we've lost, we've lost our way. Mm -hmm. uh, we always go to the lower loves, 
but uh, this exchange that Sheen talks about. We live in this era of carnality, mm -hmm. and yet uh, she's the perfect ideal. She is purity. And so to have this love for also him and her, uh, for Christ is purity. Mm -hmm. I mean, blessed are the pure heart, so they shall see God. Mm -hmm. uh, that's something to really ponder. Uh, again, this higher love of uh, loving the Blessed Mother. In a section on pride, he writes, pride being swollen egoism, it erects the human soul onto a separate center of origin apart from God, mm -hmm. it exaggerates its own importance and becomes a world in and for itself. He goes on to say, pride manifests itself in many forms, and I thought this was interesting. Atheism, which is a denial of our dependence, our God, our Creator, and our final end. It's intellectual vanity. Mm -hmm. Especially today, we, we have a wow. lot of that. Yeah, uh, and again, he wrote about the intelligentsia and the know-it-alls, and mm -hmm. uh, again, it's, uh, pride comes in three forms, intellectual, uh, social, mm -hmm. and uh, financial. And uh, again, that beautiful, he says, how can you, if you keep looking down on people because of your pride, how are you ever going to look up to heaven? And, uh, you know, he always said, why are we proud? I love that example I shared at Father Mitch. Uh, Sheen writes in the anthology, mm -hmm. he says, you know, chemically, you and I are only worth a couple dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's enough oil in our bodies for a couple bars of soap, right. uh, a couple matches, uh, two dollars. But your soul's worth everything. Mm -hmm. uh, why are you so proud? You know, so he really, um, right. you know, made us uh, yeah. humble. It's really the first sin, so, I mean, uh, yeah. it's the great one there. I thought this was interesting, too. He talks about intellectual vanity, superficiality, snobbery, presumptuousness. And this is especially one I think it's very interesting, he says here. He says, an exaggerated sensitiveness, which makes one inculpable, incapable of moral improvements because of unwillingness to hear one's own faults. And in, in another word, quite honestly, is this exaggerated PC phony tolerance we're dealing with today, really, is mm -hmm. what he's talking about. Yeah, yeah. We live in a me culture. It's all about me. And, uh, but Sheen wanted to just say, oh, oh, beware, beware. Um, again, God resists the proud. Mm -hmm. And he really warns us of that. And Sheen makes that very clear in uh, that chapter, especially, uh, all about the sins of pride. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you, you nailed it when you picked out that, uh, that little highlight. I, I love looking at your book. You've, you've really highlighted a great deal here. Mm -hmm. uh, Sheen's touched you many times. Well, yeah, I've got a beautiful poster of him opposite my desk in my office, so yes. Okay. And a picture of him actually worked when he was working at uh, the Dumont Studios in New York. Oh. Uh, picture of him standing next to a, a camera. Yeah. So two lessons emerge from this word. Glory not in ourselves, for God resists the proud. Yes. And glory in humility, for humility is truth and the path to true greatness. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people seem to think, they think of humility as either being denying what is true to act like one is less than one is, but it's not that. Yeah, there's a false humility that people put on all the time. And I love what Sheen said about uh, being thankful. He says many actors today have this great talent, many singers, but mm. how often do they thank God? How often do they thank God for their talents and their gifts? And yet he reminds us of the healing of the ten lepers mm -hmm. and how only one came back to thank him. I, I don't think we're thankful enough mm -hmm. for the gifts and talent that God's given us. We need to be humble. Mm -hmm. We need to be grateful. Well, owing somebody puts us, uh, makes us uneasy. True, true. So, uh, I thirst. Now this is, uh, says is the shortest of the seven cries, although it stands in our language as two words. The original, it is one. It's also really like the shortest chapter, I think, section in the book. I mm -hmm. think this, it's like three pages. But it's interesting, he, say, he says, he asked man for a drink, not a drink of earthly water. That is not what he meant, but a drink of love. I thirst for love. Yeah. He wants our relationship. He wants, it's the, he's the sh shepherd looking for the sheep. And, you know, I think of Mother Teresa and her whole apostolic work. Uh, she uh, based it on those words, I thirst. Mm -hmm. uh, you go into any of her chapels, you see a picture of our Lord and the words, I thirst. Mm -hmm. uh, again, he's thirsting for a relationship with us, yet we're running after everything but him. Mm -hmm. And uh, our spirit of gluttony and uh, self-indulgence, uh, again, it's this idea of our Lord, he, he's just calling out to us. Mm -hmm. And do we respond? Now, you started kind of your interest because of the victory over vice, as you said earlier. Yeah. So how did you decide that you were going to, did you just start reading all these Sheen books? Is that what it was? No. Um, what, what I thought was, 
I need something to leave to my children. If my dad was converted by Sheen's writings and there was a formula or a catechesis there, I thought I need to do something similar to help people with uh, a way of life or a rule. Mm -hmm. And really what this is, is a rule of life. It's the rhythms that we all go through. I'll give you an example. We put in a certain order because this is the way Sheen presented it. People always said, oh, how come it seems like you did it chronologically? 1937, 1938, 1939, is because Sheen, being a professor, being a retreat master, you know he had a lesson plan for his parishioners, which was all of America. Mm -hmm. uh, had five million people listening to the Catholic Hour, and uh, he knew as a priest that people would have these highs and lows. And so, for example, he would say, you know, I'm going to teach you about the Beatitudes first, mm -hmm. and uh, practice what, uh, learn from our Lord, for he's meek and humble of heart. So the Beatitudes was presented. And then we go and we try those and uh, we, we are, we're confused and then he wanted to say, now I'm going to talk to you about sorrows. And because we need to know that pain is part of this. We're not totally happy here on this earth until we get to heaven. Mm. Um, and then the following year he'd say, well, let's talk about your sin. Uh, and it, it being the good pastor, you know, a priest bringing Jesus to us and us to Jesus and uh, answering those questions about sin. And then we'd go back to fa him and say, Father, I need some more help. He said, now practice virtue. Mm -hmm. And so in 1940, he talked about virtues. Mm -hmm. And we'd still resist him. And then in 1945, he wrote the book Seven Words of Jesus and Mary and gave us Mary as a model. Mm -hmm. So it's laid out in this example of beatitudes, sorrows, mm -hmm. sin, virtue, uh, the resistance, uh, the seven words to mm -hmm. the cross, and then learning from the Blessed Mother. Because if she formed Christ for 30 years, mm -hmm. she can form us. Now, it's between 33 and 45 that is covered in this particular book, and you kind of explain with the words of Jesus and Mary. Are you thinking of doing anything else from yeah. an anthology side yeah. uh, w on Bishop Sheen? Yeah, I, I, there's still lots of unpublished works that I'd like to do a, a second volume. Mm -hmm. um, Calvary and the Mass is not in this anthology. Uh, Sheen had a number of Good Friday homilies one of them was on the Our Father and the Seven Last Words. Uh, he's got some, uh, there's, again, 58 consecutive years of mm -hmm. preaching Christ and Him crucified. Uh, there's, there's, I could do another th two or three volumes. Right. Uh, but it was important, I think, with the Seven Last Words, that theme of uh, going to Calvary and uh, just tying those in. Did you find in, in researching and, and reading Sheen for yourself, uh, were his books a function of his preaching or was his preaching a function of his books? I was amazed at his proficiency in that I've had the uh, opportunity to lay out all of his works, his uh, 20 years of radio, his 66 books, his 30 years of newspaper columns, um, and of course the, uh, the television uh, transcripts and those right. things. And you lay them out and you Life see... Life is worth living, basically. Yes. Right. Right. You see the 20 years of Catholic radio, uh, the Catholic Hour, Almost all of those talks turned into a book. Mm -hmm. So I think he was thinking at the beginning of the year, I have these lessons. He would sign a book deal mm -hmm. uh, with a publisher, and then he'd deliver the lessons, just as he would be delivering uh, lectures at the university. Right. So I think sometimes the books came first, mm -hmm. and then the lectures. And then, of course, the books were just repeating what he had said in the right. lectures. So yeah, because some of the retreat messages, many I've dealt with over the years here, in a sense, uh, would go out and repeat the retreat, and they kind of hone what they were saying, and then ultimately that would then be put into a finalized form into like a book. Right, yeah. So he wrote 32 books while he was uh, at the Catholic University of America. Mm. And during those years, as a professor there, he was on the Catholic Hour, so um, very proficient, but he was just using his notes from the classroom, from the radio, and of course it went into books. So. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, a brilliant, brilliant mind, mm -hmm. brilliant evangelist uh, to have that reach, not just the millions on the radio, but the millions that would uh, read his books. Now, you got Sophia to publish. Did they uh, come looking for you because they heard about your radio show or they saw your website or how did the book actually come into being this particular yeah. edition? Uh, the idea came to me in 2014 and I thought, I need to compile this. And uh, of course, like any project, it sits and sits for a number of years. Uh, but when I had finally put it all together, I thought, Victor Over Vice is published by Sophia Institute Press. Mm -hmm. And so naturally, it was almost like uh, 
a calling card. Okay. And uh, for whatever reason, I mean, it was the Holy Spirit, uh, I approached them and I said, I have this idea. Uh, the editor, John Barger, at the time said, can you send me chapter one? I uh, sent him chapter one, um, and uh, the next thing you know, he said, uh, send us your manuscript. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did that, and they did a beautiful job on this anthology, just uh, finishing touches and the artwork, and uh, gorgeous. But it was uh, the Holy Spirit, and it was mm -hmm. that book, Victory Over Vice, that they had published for years that, uh, of course, introduced me to Sophia. And they're, they're not only those books, the Fulton mm -hmm. Sheen books, but they have a great lineup of books. Uh, they're very good. So All right, exactly. Uh, that's how I found Sophia. That's, we like them as well. They're our partners in uh, EWTN yes. Publishing. So thank you very much, uh, Al Smith. Not related to the Al Smith dinner, but uh, yes. it's good to, good to have you here. Al Smith, compiler, editor of The Cries of Jesus from the Cross, a Fulton Sheen anthology. If you like Sheen, you'll love this book, Sophia Institute Press available through the EWTN Religious Catalog. EWTNRC.com is the place you can find it. Join us next time right here on Bookmark. Thanks.